Alright people, this is Fat Furious Fat Pack of Modern Fun, which is mostly going to be about um, assorted strange things that I've been doing with WebSymbol over the past couple of years. Um, <laughs> WebSymbol is entirely the fault of Arthas, who is around here somewhere, I think, um, because of the Italian Pearl Workshop in 2009, where I did a talk called Antiquated Pearl, uh, which was basically, let's go back and explore various tricks that we don't actually pay enough attention to anymore um, that let us do various fun bits and pieces with Pearl. And in order to illustrate these, uh, I wrote a PSGI based micro framework and then afterwards it turned out I quite liked using it. Uh, so, part of this was that I was looking for ways of doing syntax sugar, however, I had this essential requirement of no excess dependencies that weren't part of the core. So no double declare or any of that stuff because I want to be able to do single file deployment potentially, uh, which is where that fat packer exists. So what do we do? Well, we have the um, dispatch in there. That's a dispatcher specification, and that's actually using the core function prototype to pull the prototype out the subroutine. Finally, a use for pull subroutine prototypes outside of um, the block style. Anyway, <laughs> um, so a dispatch is an annotated subroutine. Uh, the other thing about this is dispatches can return more dispatches and it basically recurses through them. So there is no actual enforced structure. Um, or to put it another way, this computer has no brain, please use your own. Uh, the advantage of this uh, is that you, don't, you basically don't end up with an enforced structure. So you can build from the back end forwards and basically tag the dispatch stuff on the front once you've got all the logic working. Uh, so, my first example is going to be App Easy Peasy, uh, which I wrote for Easy MLM list moderation. Uh, largely because after four hours of trying to figure out a, way, a sensible way of doing it, it turns. Excuse me. Sorry, there's something caught in my teeth, and the amount my tongue moves about speaking at this speed is really annoying me. Anyway. Um, Pull.org um, pull mailing list, all run on Easy MLM. And trying to expose the easy MLM email admin stuff uh, is an absolute nightmare in any way that isn't horribly insecure. So I thought, well, why don't I just build a web app for them? Um, so the first thing I did in order to do that was wrote a thing called Email Easy Peasy. Um, so load the list module, tell it where the list is going to be, tell it where the easy MLM install is. And it, this is relatively simple code. So you, you, you ask for add member. And it calls for subscribe command. The call command um, is just run and builds up the appropriate arguments. Run comes from IPC system simple, which is a wonderful thing because it dies on a non zero exit code. So you can basically just do run and assume that that either completely succeeds or you're going to get an exception. Um, to get the members back, uh, you then use capture command because easy, easy MLM list um, is just a command that prints to stood out. So capture command uses capture again from IPC system simple, chomps, the chomps off the front of the um, lines, and that returns stood out. Uh, so when you call easy MLM list path to list, you get a list of the users back one per line. Okay, so far so good. Nice and simple. Uh, so having done that, I mean, there's sort of 200 lines of code in there doing add, add member, remove member, and handling the... The allow and deny list for easy MLM are just sub lists of the main list, so same code for those. Um, so app easy peasy web. Um, so dispatch request is the standard web symbol entry point. So we grab the users and declare a my dollar current user. Okay, so uh, why am I just declaring a lexical? Well, dispatch request is called every request. So the lexical is per request, so that then gives me somewhere to put state in. Um, which saves me having anything like catalyst stash or I, Mojo being catalyst plus minus has a stash as well and Dancer has something equivalent. No, nope, I, I just have a lexical variable. Much simpler. Um, Alright, so that's, that's great, but uh, we're going to need to do authentication, right? So uh, that means we need to install and configure an authentication. No, we don't. Um, what you do is you have that and that's it. Uh, the reason for that is Return with dollar PSGI and remote user. Um, dollar underscore PSGI is provided everywhere in WebSimple. That's the raw PSGI structure. Um, so if we're, all, if we're under Apache, then you would expect to have already had that handled via an HD access file, which is how it's destined to be deployed. Best way to 
make sure that you know your user authentication is secure, outsource it to somebody else's code that's already been hammered on in production for a decade. Um, and by returning nothing, that says to WebSimple, well, this, this dispatcher didn't achieve anything, go on and call the next one. Uh, so, and then return use module and load the plaque middleware. Um, if you return the middleware, WebSimple wraps the rest of dispatch in it. So at that point, if you're not under Apache, um, it recreates the HD access, HD pass to UD off using the middleware, and that's wrapped around the next section of the code. Which means my next dispatcher can rely on there being a remote user because they wouldn't have got this far otherwise because <coughs> something has got HTTP basic off. Um, at which point we ask the user collection to give us back a user object, set that lexical I prepared earlier. Um, if we didn't get one, return 401, otherwise return nothing. Um, the return 401, that's a PSGI response. If you provide a basic PSGI response, WebSimple goes, ah, that's a response, I recognise that, and returns it back out to the server, at which point it's sent to the client, problem solved. Um, and the plain return again means dispatch continues. Um, so at this point, we know that dollar current user exists, so we can have a dispatcher that, that, that relies on that. Okay, uh, list star dot dot dot. Well, list slash list name, the star is going to match, and dollar underscore one inside that, because your, that's your first parameter, is going to hold the list name. Uh, the dot dot dot, however, is the helpful part, because that's sub-dispatch. This is WebSimple's equivalent of chaining. Um, and what it does is it mangles script name and path info moves the stuff before the dot 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 from path info into script name. So if you have list list name inside there, the script name now contains list list name and the path info is slash. And if you had, say, foo on the end, the foo is still in the path <coughs> info. So you can now dispatch on the remainder of the path that you haven't already handled. Which means that in there, we can match for list slash list name, just use a match on slash, don't have to repeat any URL parts, and then pull list dispatchers and the rendering call. Uh, list dispatchers? Well, it's just a method. WebSimple doesn't care. WebSimple says, yeah, anything that returns some subroutines that are dispatchable, I can work with. Um, so you return a reusable set of dispatchers. So if, all of the way through this where I'm breaking the code up, if I find myself repeating dispatch logic, I just extract it into a method. Um, so list dispatchers, top of it looks like that. Um, uh, the idea of that being, if we've got a post with an add parameter, we then go and um, call the add member on the list, which is going to call the underlying easy MLM command. Um, and if that breaks, then run's going to throw an exception, which we can put into $RF to be used later. Um, so yeah, post matches the HTTP method. Percent add equals, um, percent says to WebSimple, we're matching the body param. Question mark is for query parameter. Add equals is the add parameter must be present. So if you get as far as this, you know that not only has that form been submitted, but the add parameter actually has some sort of content. You know the field was there, so you've, you can, you've already got does this exist validation, which saves you a little bit of trouble. Um, so at that point, if you look, it's still doing a return. Because it's still doing a return, that means that dispatch still continues. Um, so, having done the list dispatcher stuff, when the list page still gets called, no matter what, which means after the post has been processed, you get the normal get page ribbon. Um, and that's HTML zoom based, which means that my code is looking, um, the, the, the various weaving stuff in, notably, look for something with the class list member, that's a CSS selector, and then I can take across the list members, and do a repeat. That subroutine is a zoom expression to be applied each time. So for each of those members, I return one of those subroutines, and that then replaces the list name content with the email and fills in a remove field in a form so that you've got your post for remove. Um, at which point, <coughs> the HTML template just looks like that, that section of it. So the LI class gets matched, the content gets repeated. Um, so you get a list item for every member. Um, the span gets filled out with the name, and the form field gets filled out as well in a hidden field, so when you hit the remove button next to it, that's going to remove the user. So, the end result, uh, I spent, basically I wrote this in a weekend, um, 547 lines, includes white space, includes the template, um, and the response from the pull.org knock when I showed it to them 
was, well, it's a bit modern pearl for my taste, says Robert Speer, who um, <laughs> still thinks mod pearl and combust and class DVI is wonderful. Thank you, Robert. Um, but he did give me permission to not use those on account of my wanted contributors under the age of 50. Um, <laughs> and um, we had a short to-do list to go through, and then hopefully, hopefully, we will be able to get a version of this deployed onto Pearl.org to moderate the lists on that. Um, we'll see. There's still various bits of systems to be done and actually dealing with it, and um, most of the reason that I put the moderation stuff on was because various people were going, oh, there's not enough moderation on Pearl.org lists, therefore we must move all mailing lists off Pearl.org. Um, at which point I wrote this and went, here, here's a moderation system. There's five to-dos left. And all of the people who've been going, oh, I, I'm going to install Mailman and configure Mailman and set things up, not a single commit from any of them. So apparently it wasn't that urgent. Anyway, um, small digression. Not the coffee. Shadow Cat seems to roughly rewrite our CMS once per domain name change. Um, we started off using shadowcatsystems.co.uk, and that was a plain HTML system, um, which was basically maintained by MDK with whatever editor he was using at the time. I have no idea. It was some sort of gooey thing with syntax highlighting, so I refused to look at it. Uh, um, as we moved to shadowcat.co.uk, um, we actually wrote some code for the site this time because we were planning for it to have more than five pages. Um, and that was a Catalyst application using the reaction libraries, um, which was one of my more um, interesting ideas. But let, let, let's, let's, yes. Um, the, the, there's about three people in the audience who remembers those and, and are giggling at me, and everybody else doesn't know about them, and just, just don't. Um, We'll take a ride later. Yeah. Um, and that was page data maintained in Subversion and file CGI for deployment. Um, <coughs> Hacking News managed to kill the server once. That was good. Um, although that was because I was an idiot. Um, I, I completely failed to add the location slash static directive in Apache. So all of the CSS loading was going through the first CGI code and Catalyst plug in static simple. Which was absolutely fine, except we only had um, three or four fast CGI processes running. So when you suddenly got, got um, half of Hacker News trying to access the thing at once, all of the Apache threads tied up waiting for the fast CGI and the site appeared to be down in spite of the fact the load was about 0.05. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> so, when, when we went to shadow.cat, uh, I was sort of, sort of like, yeah, okay, it, it's time to rewrite it again. Um, uh, I, I thought, let, let's, let's, have, let's have something simpler, because the less moving parts, the less opportunities there are for me to make mistakes like that. Um, but... <laughs> This, 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 is the, this is the company website. It's, it's actually possibly the least important application that we maintain, because all, all, all of the stuff that we do for uh, all, all of the stuff that we work with for the consultancy and support customers, um, they're building big ass catalyst applications that usually are part of their core business. So that's really quite important. Whereas if the Shadowcat site goes down, yes, we look faintly silly. Yes, this is unfortunate, but none of our customers are inconvenienced in any way whatsoever. Um, so I, I, I consider myself to have a little bit of license to play with the Shadowcat site and do experimental things. Um, and it occurred to me as I went along that while SES <coughs> started off when I was thinking about this standing for Shadowcat site, um, it, it started in my head standing for Simple Content Server instead. And then things started. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, all right, um, if, you've got, if you're trying to do a generalized content server, what, well, what do you do? Um, well, the, 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 there's, there's, there's two things that happen with a CMS code base normally. Either number one, it does exactly what you need and is useless to everybody else, or number two, it does 17 million things, weighs four tons, has more CPAN dependencies than two copies of Mojo Mojo. 
Um, <laughs> and it's completely and utterly useless for building anything small. Um, but, I mean, that, that, that doesn't mean that such a thing can't be useful. Um, I think web GUI is a canonical example of huge but still actually quite useful. Um, but I don't want to be writing something like that. No. Um, what I want is something that serves content in a nice configurable way. How do I make it sensibly configurable? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to need blog list pages, I'm going to need feeds. Let's just make it all pluggable. Everything is a plugin, at which point I can build plugins that do the things I need and hopefully other people can do the same thing. And if we get this right, you know, you, you could, um, a demonstration of um, how a plugin system can be really, really useful might be, say, WordPress. Demonstration of how not to write a plugin system might be, say, WordPress. <laughs> uh, so I, I started thinking about this. So um, the core um, SCS code base, the first thing it does is loads a plugin called core. Yes, the core functionality is actually a plugin. No, I've never seen any reason to not load it, but it means that everything is uniform. That there's no distinction between things that are core functionality and things that are plugin supplied. Um, it, 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 you just have a default plugin that's always loaded, and then goes through the config and loads whatever you ask for. Um, and then the dispatch request goes through the plugin list and asks them for their dispatches. Because again, this is web simple, so dispatches can come from anywhere. And this is where it starts getting fun. <laughs> if the plugins are supplying the dispatches, just let me check how many slides I am through. Yeah, that's not too bad. Um, then, okay, the core plugin, um, its page dispatches, grabs itself, <coughs> and then for slash, um, looks for a page called index. And for anything else, looks for a page with that path. And yes, you haven't seen that syntax before. Star star is match as many parts of the URL as you can. Colon path is a named parameter. So rather than having them as positional, you end up with an initial parameter of that's a hash reference. Then, web symbol goes, if dollar underscore one is a hash ref, well, they, they probably put a bunch of stuff in there that they want to use. So let's just assign percent underscore to it. Um, at which point, dollar underscore path in that style now contains your main parameter, at which point you can do that style of get and get the desired result. Um, so, pages get, page set dot pm. So we grab the spec, look for the path, um, split it up so we have the directory part and the trailing file part. Yes, arguably that should probably use file base name dear name or split path or something. Um, but every time I do something like that, I then move to Windows and it goes, ah, I'm trying to split a URL as a Windows path and everything dies. So, regex, screw it, you know. Um, <laughs> and then we need to go and look for a file via this very simple piece of code. Um, <coughs> right. Uh, I probably need to explain this bit, don't I? Um, all right. So, um, the dollar brace backslash um, is resolving that, sub that code reference as a method call. Um, in the same way as you can do arrow dollar name to provide a method name, you can actually provide anything that is a method name or a code reference. So, by doing dollar brace backslash, the backslash turns it from a sub ref into a sub ref ref, the dollar brace brace unrefs it, at which point that subroutine gets executed as a method, and my dollar IO is actually the dollar self. <laughs> so, um, if so, um, yeah. Um, the reason for this is if we've got a path like through Barbaz, we want to do a cat beer to um, descend into the right directory, and if the page is just foo, do a no. Once we've done that, we go into filter. We're <coughs> just doing um, a check on the file name and setting a closed over variable called dollar type. That's, that's relatively the easy part. Um, the purpose of that is to find a file called whatever the page name is, .md or .html. Currently only those two are supported as rendering. 
because HTML and Markdown has been quite sufficient. Um, the old version of the code base did support pod as well, but it turns out that when I'm writing articles, I would much rather write Markdown and pod, and nobody's complained about the lack of pod support. So um, adding it back would be about five lines. I'll do it if anybody actually moans at me. Um, and then finally, we have another, <laughs> method, we have another inline method um, whose purpose is the fact that if the directory didn't exist, you couldn't call all files on it because it doesn't exist, so it doesn't have any files, so you get an exception. Um, because IOR is really quite unusual. Um, because the module written by Inge that actually makes code more reliable rather than more full of crack. Um, very useful thing. I, 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 I pretty much switched to using IOR where um, older code would use path class. Um, because IOR has more features, is better at dying, and isn't written by the idiot who, who invented module build. Um, who, having looked at the design of that, I quite frankly don't trust him to write a pull one liner that, that, that print hello world. Um, and then having finally got that sorted out, um, pull the data out and inflate it to a page object. Um, I could go through the inflation stuff, but that's actually really quite boring compared to the rest of it, and I've only got so long to talk. So, um, Given a page object, we now need to go away and render it. So it's time for another layer of plugins, because obviously what else are you going to do? Um, so the core plugin um, provides a page plugin type called page data. Um, and page data um, provides a zoom filter that goes through looking for various CSS classes, um, <coughs> which is in the top title data, <coughs> subtitle information, various meta stuff. Um, okay, that's, that's the filter content zoom. Uh, I've not explained that yet, have I? So, um, the idea here is we have a three-stage rendering system. Um, the page object that got returned is actually a PSG app. Um, because if WebSimple gets something with a two-app method, it goes, oh, it's a PSG app. I know how to dispatch to one of those um, and does it. So, two-app um, does... Um, set and returns a PSGI app that renders a PSGI response, shockingly enough. Um, so, first stage, build out the HTML zoo. Um, so, you start off by creating a zoom weed for the main page object. If it was a markdown page, it's already been turned into HTML by this stage. Um, and then we do a reduce. Um, basically, that's going to recursively apply the filter HTML zoom methods from all of the plugins that provide one. Um, so that builds up the overall HTML. Nice thing about that is that the templates and layouts can be applied at that stage, which means by the time you get to the end of this phase, what you have is a complete HTML weave for the page just with no data in it yet. Um, which point the next stage is the content zoom stage, which is where page data cuts in. Um, and that actually weaves the page data into the HTML you got created. Uh, the crucial advantage of doing it this way um, is that something like select.page.title can work on stuff into template or the layout. Yes? You coming in? Yes, yes I am. Good, now get to the back, you're a sin of this. Anyway, um, the point of this is um, even the title tag provided in the layout um, is going to be available to that to be selected because we've already applied the layout around the main page content. Um, which means you don't have, don't have to mess it up. Anybody who's used layouts in template toolkit will have, I'm sure, had huge amounts of fun <coughs> trying to get the main page body to pass data up to be rendered into the layout. Because now all of the rendering logic for every page is fiddling with the um, layout stuff has to happen in the layout file, and you end up with a layout file that's more logic than code. Whereas in this case, the layout has already been applied, so we can just select it. So if, if I wanted to add um, extra JavaScript to a particular page, um, I could just apply a plugin that at this point went, find the end of the head section and stick a script tag in um, immediately before we do anything. Um, and things like that, there's a plugin called Sublist, 
um, which applies here, and that does the blog index pages. It just looks for a div class equal sublist and renders through um, the list of inner pages. That's how, if you look at the, um, the main page of my blog, that's being rendered at that point. Um, and then finally, we build out the PSGI response, um, and we have one final stage, um, and that one can modify anything, but generally you're expected to be modifying PSGI level stuff. If you wanted to mess with the XGML, you should have done it already. Um, <coughs> but that gives you a chance to set extra headers, to change the status code, so the, the, the 404 page change, um, sets status to 404 at this stage. Um, and that's, that basically means, okay, that's, that's page rendering sorted, cool. Uh, what next, what next, what next? Oh, well, we're going to need to do feeds, okay? <coughs> so, page dispatches again in the feeds plugin. Um, the feeds plugin gets given a location to mount at. Shockingly enough, it defaults to slash feed slash. Um, and then in this case, because I need to interpolate something in, Rather than using the prototype style, I'm using return a string and a subroutine reference separately. And again, WebSimple will spot that and go, ah, you want to dispatch that to there. Okay, that's cool. Um, so having done that, um, generate the, the relevant configuration stuff. Um, the dollar underscore of one is wherever the feed is located, so we can reconstruct the URL for it later. Um, and then feed HTTP response. Okay, where does that come from? Easy. Delegated to a generator object. So, generator.pm. Generator.pm is fun. Um, at the top level, all it does is go config to data and then make a response out of it. Yeah, yeah, just, just get up to the back, it'll be fun. Um, so, what, what does config to data do? Um, <coughs> absolutely finds the URL, puts in the title. Um, content, created information, and then the summary is the fun part. Um, yeah. Um, doing inline HTML in Perl code, because I can. <laughs> um, in fact, OpenKey <coughs> parses as a read line on the package glob file handle P. Oh. And close P passes as a glob call. <laughs> so all we have to do there is tie any file any any file handle that we needed and override call global glob. Um, uh, well, actually, it's not quite that simple. Um, there was actually there was a hacking room at the Italian Bell workshop. Um, and then there was, there was somebody else who was sat in there who left when I was about halfway through implementing this part because of the fun, fundamentally I was I don't think I actually said anything that wasn't a swear word for about 15 minutes <laughs> because what you actually have to do is that and the reason is this comment is actually from the code <coughs> Because the problem is, you need to clear out core global blob in case somebody else has already overwritten it. The string reference called recreate, <coughs> that's fine. <coughs> However, if I was to use the quotes off that and just do scar core colon colon global colon colon blob, the Perl compiler would conveniently bind to the original one during compile time, except because I just deleted it out of that out part of the symbol table, it's been freed. And Pearl Seg faults. Yes. <laughs> From Pearl Seg faults. Yeah. So there's one for the Pearl interpreter telling you you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> 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 Where does the that on it. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, um, it turns out to be really handy when I'm actually generating a feed. I'm sorry. An atom feed has a very obvious simple structure. When you end up using an OO interface to do it, you've basically got three layers of gunk between you and the XML. And these three layers of gunk do not actually add anything. So instead, let, let, let's just inline the XML in the pearl. There we go. <laughs> um, 
complete with paint with uh, bits of quote marks so it c comes out formatted pretty. <laughs> you, the important thing when generating markup or code is that the final markup or code should look good because then you can find out, you can find the mistakes. If you make your code generator pretty and the output ugly, you will never be able to debug it because it doesn't matter how pretty it is if you can't find the problem in the output. Anybody I, I suspect in here who's written code generators will have learned this one the hard way. I certainly did. I'm assuming the low name in the middle of the line is rendering glitch somewhere, is it? Or am I missing something? The what? That two thirds way down, there's just an end quote in the middle of the text. Oh, yeah, that's. that's it's formatted. I have no idea why I did that. Oh, I see. That's my job. Yeah. yeah it's got you. Um, so that, that sorts out things. All right, um, moving on then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like it. it. It's easier to maintain than any other feed generator I've worked with, so whatever. Okay, <laughs> we're going to need a dev server, right? So um, that's also fairly easy. Uh, what do we do? Well, we, this is SCS, you write another plugin, right? <laughs> Um, so I start off with a method to build a static handler, and that's just build a placap file, because as I said, WebSimple will dispatch a placap for me, um, at which point I just put slash static slash dot 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 at the placap file. And obviously you need to point favicon as well, uh, because favicon is special, because favicon is always special. Um, the reason for needing to do plus dot I ICO um, is WebSimple allows you to match on um, extensions so that you can do things like .json and whatever, dispatching separately. <coughs> in, the, in, in more recent versions, I'm fairly sure I could do just slash favicon.ico um, because we spent about three months patching, fiddling around to get that to work for everybody, but um, I haven't gone back and modified that code because it works. Um, <laughs> The other nice thing is, this means the static dispatchers only exist in the dev server. Which means I can't screw the Apache config up again. Because <laughs> if you deploy this live under, under anything else, it ain't going to serve the static assets at all. So you actually remember to put it in the web server config. Um, <coughs> so, uh, run command server. Fairly simple. This, this is basically um, an unrolled plaque up indication. Um, so, Telegram want to use Starman, grab the PSGI application and set it going. Um, if you're wondering what, um, the dollar env there is a CLI env. It's got um, argv, stood in, stood out, stood up. Um, th this is my continuing experimentation with the idea of um, PSGI is so much fun for web, why don't we have a PCLI for command line stuff? Um, I'm, 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 not, I'm not there yet, but using, treating it as a pattern to be replicated seems to be working quite well. Uh, somebody else is welcome to write a standard document <coughs> if they want to. I'm just going to keep iterating until I stop hating it. Um, and yeah, even the command line stuff is pluggable. Um, if you provide one command server in the plugin, um, then that means you have a server command at the top level. So bin slash site server gives you a Starman instance. Um, and that's your development environment. <coughs> okay, uh, not quite. Um, one last thing we needed, uh, which is a generate plugin. Um, because I thought, you know, this is all fundamentally static ish content, right? So why can't we generate it out to disk? Shouldn't be that hard. Uh, and the code ends up looking something like that. Um, I've, removed a bunch of the error handling so it fits on the screen, but that is pretty much the real code. And the crucial thing here is run test request, which is provided by WebSimple application. Any WebSimple app has a run test request method, um, because I got really bored of needing to have um, catalyst test and dancer test and all, all of that other stuff. Why, 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 why do I have to do something complicated to be able to start writing a test file for my, for my app? Um, so it basically does an on-demand load of plaque test and returns an HTTP response. At which point, we can write the pages out to disk. Um, and then that pretty much just uses the content type to figure out what file name. So you get .html for normal pages and .atom for the feeds. Um, and it always writes them as name index, 
So when, if you say to Apache, basically options index um, HTML or Atom, that will all get served correctly. Um, having done that, okay, at all parts, where do we get that from now? Because, you know, it's now, um, <coughs> well, ask the plugins. <laughs> um, so all of the plugins supply a provides pages method, uh, which can list all of the pages involved. Um, so core.pm asks the page set for all parts in there, which just does a scan across disk. Um, and feeds.pm um, just checks through its config and gives you all of the feeds that have been configured. And the, the last thing is though, I want to be, you know, sometimes you're going to want to just generate a couple of pages to check what they end up looking like. Um, so simple regex, <coughs> that's fine. Um, and you can then run bin slide generate. Hang on. Where did the options come from? That's easy. Run command generate. And that's a get up spec in the prototype for the command line stuff. Because, you know, I wasn't using it for dispatching for this because it's CLI code. Uh, um, so your end result is bin slice like generate, run an RSIC, and that is actually how shadow.cat is now published. Um, it's basically update your Git repository, write the page file, run the generate command, kick off an RSync, site's live. And since that's now completely static pages, not only does it not only does it deploy a lot, does it um, deploy reliably, not only is it way faster to serve than any dynamic code was ever going to be, if I manage to cock up the code base and introduce a horrible bug, it doesn't break the site anymore. <laughs> so um, both of these applications are in git.shadowcat.co.uk. Um, they're under SC PubGit. You'll be able to find various other bits and pieces. Um, there is a hash web symbol on irc.pull.org where, where people tend to discuss the various things that they're trying to do at the moment. Um, and all I can really say is happy hacking and thank you very much. before the next talk starts. I'll be outside having a smoke. Cheers. <laughs>